pessoal, o Tec Mundo N3 2016 e um dos grandes destaques das últimas semanas no mundo dos games é Injustice 2. E a gente está aqui agora para conversar com Ed Boon, um dos criadores, diretores e realmente um dos maiores representantes da franquia Mortal Kombat e da Netherrealm, que é o estúdio responsável pelo jogo, pelo Injustice 1 e pelo novo também, para conversar com ele sobre o game. So first of all, Ed, thanks a lot for talking with us. And uh, Injustice 2 has been revealed. Is blowing everybody's mind. What can you talk a little bit about the mechanics of the game and what it differs from the previous title, Injustice One? Uh, well, as far as the, the 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 fighting mechanics, you know, it's it's based off the Injustice engine, but we've added some some uh, enhanced features. You know, you can you can um, use your uh, uh, meter when you dash to to roll out of, of of the dash or something like that. Basically, canceling the dash. And uh, you can also get out of a combo when you're being juggled in the air. Those those are layers. But the biggest feature that we've added is probably the the, the gear system that that's kind of really changes everything up completely as far as, as uh, what fighting games are. The gear system, yes. which now lets players customize their own characters. Yes. How will that work? Uh, well, every character in the game has thousands of boots. Utility belts, you know, thousands. Yeah, oh, thousands, easily thousands, and um, and they all power up your character. So you're constantly getting drops of new gear, and you're constantly upgrading your character, making them a little bit better, a little bit better, um, until you've kind of sculpted your perfect version of Batman, your version of Aquaman, your version of Superman. So when you get online and you're playing against other people, your Batman's going to look and play differently than the other Batman. You're, you're going to focus more on, you know, whether you want to focus more on defense or offense or some other um, aspect of the game. You can unlock uh, special moves and um, so you're really kind of crafting your own version. The personalization like that is what really makes Sets and Justice apart. Does that mean that I can unlock items and make my characters of, uh, I can have Batmans of different periods in the DC universe? Yes, there's 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 obviously parts that will have different, like, you know, different Batman symbols and stuff like that, but sometimes if you take um, combinations of parts, that'll unlock an entire uh, um, costume for the for the character you know you might have gaslight batman or or red sun superman or you know all of these uh, kind of classic um costumes for these characters can be unlocked with combinations of gear the first injustice was not only a game in terms of history we had that happening in the dc universe and it was really important to the history of that universe does injustice 2 advance on the previous story or is it a completely new case It advances on the, it continues the, the, the story from Injustice. Um, it was so great with the first Injustice game, we had um, this comic book that came out that told the story of the years leading up to um, the first Injustice game. And we had our Injustice game, and now we're going to continue the story from the first Injustice game. Great. And you guys are offering character customization, and I see that a lot of people are loving that because you're going to have some kind of achievement during your, your, your single player campaign, but nobody up to this point has managed to do that for competitive play. How are you guys planning to balance competitive play with the customization? Because, for example, if I want to play a fighting game, I want to be better than my opponent, not better than his character, right? right? Yep. Uh, how would that work for competitive play? Are you guys planning to disable that? Um, we are definitely going to have some kind of um, like a tournament mode or, or, or some kind of gameplay mode that levels out the playing field um, that will, 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 everybody will play on an even keel. That's, that's the only way to play a tournament game. I think it'd be crazy to, to make people just, um, uh, uh, it, you know, a level 20 Batman fight against a level two Aquaman or something like that. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're um, while we want players to level up their characters and have fun, Tournaments are a, a different story. Those you really need uh, the even play field. So online, I can choose between two modes. I can play with my uh, customized character, but I can also play in a tournament mode where everyone is with the same characters. Absolutely. Okay. And now, in the let's let's work our imagination here. Okay. In the story of fighting games, we have seen great crossovers. So yes. let's think big here. What would be NetherRealm vision for something like DC? versus Marvel in the NetherRealm vision? What would it be? 
Um, it would be probably something, something somewhat similar to Injustice, but you know we would have to kind of incorporate, um, you know, the, the 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 Marvel characters. That would be, you know, that would be a uh, um, that would be a dream game to make. So that would be uh, we would have to think about it for quite a while. But it would, I would imagine it would be somewhat like Injustice where it's over the top. Over the top because you guys are having great cinematic experience there. Uh, yeah. uh, that is a, really a core mechanic of the game. Sometimes you, you see uh, amazing destructions. Does that change from character to character and character to stage? Obviously every character has the big, their big super moves, which is the, their own that is um, uh, custom for that character. And uh, the, the stage transitions are all the same for, for the... Um, for the characters, how they how they tr travel from one arena to the next. Okay, and NetherRealm has achieved a great commercial success with the Mortal Kombat and Injustice series, and also a great respect from the competitive players. How do you guys achieve that? What do you think are, is the secret of your games that uh, it caters to so many different target audiences? Well, w we definitely try to um, to make the game as accessible as possible so as many people can play it and have fun as possible. But then we also add layers that the fighting game community and the, the professional players can really dissect and master and, and pick up nuances that the casual player probably is never gonna see. So we try to provide both of them. That's that's I think that's a big part of why we've we've managed to have some of the success that we've had. Okay, now to close it out, Ed, what is your favorite DC character of all time? And what is your favorite fighting game of all time? Uh, my favorite DC character of all time is The Flash. Um, and my favorite fighting game of all time is probably either Mortal Kombat 9 or Mortal Kombat X. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot for this interview, Ed. I really wish that Injustice 2 can please everyone and help them find their own way with these amazing heroes from the DC Universe. Congratulations on the game and good luck because I know that will be, it will blow people's minds. Pessoal, a gente conversou aqui com Ed Boon sobre Injustice 2. O jogo está realmente extremamente cinematográfico e para a galera competitiva foi legal saber aí que a versão de torneio vai desativar as customizações, mas para quem quer zerar o jogo vai ser sensacional zerar com o seu próprio Batman, com o seu próprio Flash, com o seu próprio Aquaman. Meu nome é Guilherme Sarda, a gente conversou aqui com o Edmund e esse é o Tecmundo na E3 2016.